Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Then there were four. Alan Bean goes west. Be light chipper down in Alaska. And Diamond's aerobatic Dart 550 flies for the first time. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's May 30th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A dozen men have walked on the moon, yet today only four survived to relate to the extraordinary personal experience of having walked the surface of a world other than Earth. Alan Bean, astronaut artist and lunar module pilot, has gone west at the age of 86. Bean's life was extraordinary and spanned two pivotal manned space programs. He made his first fly into space aboard Apollo 12 the second manned mission to land on the moon at age 37 in November 1969, joining P. Conrad in the landing and served as the lunar module pilot. He made a second and final flight into space on the Skylab 3 mission in 1973, the second manned mission to Skylab, America's first manned space station. Upon his retirement from the Navy in 1975 and NASA in 1981, he pursued a long-standing interest in painting, depicting various space-related scenes, and documenting his own experiences in space, as well as that of his fellow Apollo program astronauts. He was the last living crew member of Apollo 12. Being logged 1,671 hours and 45 minutes in space, of which 10 hours and 26 minutes were spent in EVAs on the moon and in Earth orbit. Allen was a class act, and those of us at a and fortunate enough to call him a friend will miss him greatly. After the break, NOAA adopts technology to automate weather balloon launches. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. NOAA's National Weather Service is tapping technology to automate weather balloon launches in Alaska, a move that will allow staff to improve public service across the state while saving federal tax dollars. NWS has initiated a demonstration of auto launchers in Alaska, with two of the state's 13 upper air sites already using them. Annette Alaska will receive an auto launch system this month and the technology will be installed across the state's remaining 10 sites over the next two years. United Technologies has announced plans to hire 35,000 people and make investments of more than $15 billion in research and development and capital expenditures in the United States over the next five years. United Technologies is growing globally and growing the fastest in the United States said Gregory J. Hayes, Chairman and CEO of United Technologies Corporation. The FAA has certified Darts Bell 505 Emergency Flotation System. With TCCA approval issued in mid-February of this year, the system, which is the first of its kind on the market, has started seeing its first deliveries. The Fairmont, Minnesota School District began encouraging its educators to pursue professional development that could help students in achieving their academic goals. 
science teacher Brad Johnson and math teacher Jerry Brooks decided to take flying lessons and began to develop an aviation program for FHS students. Both teachers earned their private pilot certificates two years later and have now established a two-semester Principles of Flight curriculum that will include classroom discussions and hands-on projects using a commercially available online private pilot course. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The prototype V Light Chipper has gone down in Anchorage, Alaska, after an accident that the pilot and builder, Jim Weeby, attributes to likely fuel starvation. Here is how he described the accident. While in a pattern at Lake Hood, I advised the tower I would go around, about 150 to 200 feet AGL while climbing out, the engine quit. Lake Hood's trip is very short and I did not have time to check fuel tanks and restart. I advised tower I was landing, flew the plane towards the remaining runway for two or three seconds, then advised the tower I would not stop in the remaining runway. Impossible. Way too much speed. I touched down at the end of the runway immediately bounced high, then thought perhaps I could clear the chain link fence. I couldn't. Chipper's landing gear collided with the top of the fence and went over the fence, and about 30 feet later hit the marsh nose down, then rolled onto its back. A fraction of a second later, I'm hanging upside down. I am essentially unharmed. I have some very minor scratches. My upper shins hit the bottom of the instrument panel. My lack of bodily harm is a testament to the honeycomb cabin structure. After these messages, Diamond's aerobatic Dart 550 flies for the first time. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. A new variant of the Diamond Aircraft Art Series completed its first flight earlier this month performing a basic flight program, including a couple of low approaches, system checks, landing gear operation at different speeds, as well as a short field takeoff demonstration. The DART 550 is powered by a General Electric GE H75-100 turboprop engine with 550 horsepower, featuring electric engine and propeller control system, a five-blade fuel feather MT propeller, and features Martin Baker MK-16 ejection seats and Garmin G3000 integrated avionics systems. The expected maximum speed is 247 notch to airspeed with a maximum takeoff mass of 5,291 pounds and an empty mass of 3,527 pounds. Maximum endurance at loiter speed of the DART 550 will be 8 hours plus reserve at maximum takeoff mass. The aerobatic trainer will be available in different variants, differing in engine power ratings, seat configuration, and or avionics options for diverse customer needs. The DART 550 will be presented at Farnborough Air Show in the UK from July 16th until July 22nd, 2018 on the static display. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.